de Ugarit archives. Thousands of cuneiform tablets written in a distinctive script tell the dramatic story of a Bronze Age merchant city in Syria. Ertenu was a late Bronze Age merchant of some status from his townhouse in Ugarit, on the coast of Syria. He ran a trading firm that conducted business on behalf of the state. Beginning sometime before 1200 BC, he kept letters, accounting ledgers, and administrative texts documenting the export of copper ingots, wood, and other goods from the interior of Syria and the import of wares from Cyprus and Egypt. Ertenu also sent and received diplomatic letters and had an impressive list of contacts. Among the 650 baked clay tablets found in the ruins of his house thus far, archaeologists have turned up missives to and from the kings of Egypt, Assyria, Beirut, and the Hittite realm in what is now Turkey. Ertenu corresponded with these potentates in the name of the king of Ugrit. He seems to have been a cultured man. 2. Archaeologists found passages from the ancient Mesopotamian poem The Epic of Gilgamesh in his house, written, like almost all surviving texts in Ugrit, on densely inscribed tablets. Ugarit map Han Faisal between 1200 and about 1185 BC. Ertenu's correspondence took on a more ominous tone. Polite requests for help turned into increasingly desperate pleas. A severe drought and famine began to upend life in the kingdoms and city-states around Ugarit. The tablets speak of Biru, hunger in the Akkadian language, which was widely spoken in the Levant, spreading across the landscape. If there is any goodness in your heart, then send even the remainders of the grain staples I requested and thus save me, pleads a Hittite official. Food shortages were becoming dire. In the land of Ugrit there is a severe hunger. May my lord save it. And may the king give grain to save my life, and to save the citizens of the land of Ugrit, wrote Ugarit's king Amurapi Ka. 1215 to 1190 BC to the Egyptian pharaoh Seti II, who ruled from about 1200 to 1190 for BC. War was also coming, one letter, likely one of the archives last and probably never sent, speaks of invaders appearing off the coast and establishing a beachhead at Rasu, barely five miles from Ugrit, in the letter. Amurapi begs the viceroy of the Hittite vassal city-state of Karchemish, send me forces and chariots and may my lord save me from the forces of this enemy. The enemy was almost certainly the so-called Sea Peoples, maritime marauders whose identity remains unclear and who overran Ugarit and burned it to the ground. It did not fall alone. At the same time, across the eastern Mediterranean, cities and trading networks were threatened by drought, invasion, mass migration, and possibly local insurrection. Egypt's dynastic system survived a cataclysmic battle with the Sea Peoples in 1177 BC, but Mycenae and Pylos in Greece and states in Cyprus, Canaan, and Turkey were all obliterated in what scholars have termed the Late Bronze Age Collapse. Clay tablets found in Ugarit include a letter above left from the Hittite king Tutalia IV II, his counterpart in Ugarit that offers details on horse shipments, with a circular royal seal as a signature, and a legal text above right, in Mesopotamian cuneiform that dates from the reign of King Nikmadu II. Other clay tablets found in Ugarit include a tablet above left from an aide to the king of Beirut, informs the king of Ugarit about a shipment of wood and a tablet above right in alphabetic. Cuneiform tells the myth of the death and rebirth of the city's supreme god. Ball. Left. Objects from across the eastern Mediterranean found in Ugarit include a bowl above left, with Egyptian motifs excavated in the city's harbor and a carnelian scarab above right. Imported from Egypt. Other objects from across the eastern Mediterranean found in Ugarit include a seal above left, with an inscription in the Hittite language that refers to Ugarit's political ties to that empire in modern-day Turkey and a Mycenaean ceramic ceremonial vessel above right, in the shape of an animal, ed, imported from Greece. A fragment of an alabaster vase bearing the cartouche of an Egyptian pharaoh was found in Ugarit. Introduction Nestled along the northern coast of what is now modern-day Syria, in the outskirts of Latakia, sited on the Mediterranean coast the ancient city of Ugrit thrived during the Bronze Age, leaving behind a treasure trove of artifacts, texts, and architectural wonders that provide invaluable insights into the culture and society of this enigmatic civilization. The Ugrit civilization, active between the 14th and 12th centuries BC, played a pivotal role in the history of the Eastern Mediterranean, serving as a bridge between several great empires, including the Hittites and Egyptians. In this article, we will embark on a journey to discover the wonders of Ugrit, exploring its history, 
language, religion, and its significant contributions to the ancient world. Ugarit was an ancient cosmopolitan port city in northern Syria, in the outskirts of modern Latakia, sited on the Mediterranean coast, discovered by accident in 1928 with the Ugaritic texts. It flourished during the Late Bronze Age, from around 1450 to 1200 BCE. Its ruins are often called Rashamur, after the headland where they lie. Ugarit was a major center of trade and culture in the eastern Mediterranean, and its inhabitants played a crucial role in the development of alphabetic writing. The discovery of the Ugaritic language and texts in the 20th century provided valuable insights into the society, religion, and daily life of this fascinating civilization. Ugarit had close connections to the Hittite Empire, sent tribute to Egypt at times, and maintained trade and diplomatic connections with Cyprus then called Alashia. Documented in the archives recovered from the site and corroborated by Mycenaean Nan Cypriot, pottery found there. The polity was at its height from 1450 BC until its destruction in 1185 BC. The city was conquered and destroyed by the Sea Peoples around 1200 BC, well as earthquakes and famines which are known to have plagued the area. People continued to inhabit the area in smaller settlements until at least the 4th century BC. Rediscovered in 1928, the site dates back to 6000 BC, making it one of the earliest known urban centers. It has yielded a treasure trove of archaeological information, including several late Bronze Age libraries of clay tablets in various ancient languages. The most significant of these finds was the religious text known as the Ball Cycle, which details the mythology of several Canaanite gods and provides previously unknown insights into how the religious culture of Canaan influenced the writers of the Bible. Ugarit had a rich artistic tradition, influenced by both Egyptian and Mycenaean cultures. The discoveries there also revealed Ugarit's previously known cuneiform alphabetic script, an important precursor to the true alphabet. Historical Background the Ugarit civilization began as a small settlement around 1800 BC. Ugarit was an ancient city-state that flourished in what is now Ras Shamra, Syria. Its history is rich and complex, intertwined with various neighboring powers. Ugarit's strategic location for trade and commerce along important trade routes, connecting Anatolia, Mesopotamia, and Egypt, contributed to its prosperity. Over the centuries, it fell under the influence of the Hittites, Egyptians, and other neighboring empires. This cross-cultural exchange left an indelible mark on Ugaritic art, religion, and politics. The early inhabitants of Ugarit engaged in agricultural activities and developed a simple form of writing known as cuneiform. This early settlement laid the foundation for the later development of the Ugarit civilization. In 1600 BC, expansion and prosperity during this period, Ugarit experienced a period of expansion and prosperity. The city-state grew in size and became an important center for trade in the eastern Mediterranean. Ugarit developed strong economic ties with neighboring civilizations, including the Hittites and the Egyptians. The Ugaritians excelled in maritime trade and their ships were a common sight in ports throughout the region. This period marked the height of Ugarit's influence and wealth. History Ras Shamra lies on the Mediterranean coast, some 11 kilometers 7 miles north of Latakia, near modern Burj al Qasab, origins and the second millennium. A tomb in the royal palace's courtyard, Neolithic Ugarit was important enough to be fortified with a wall early on, perhaps by 6000 BC, though the site is thought to have been inhabited earlier. Ugarit was important perhaps because it was both a port and at the entrance of the inland trade, route to the Euphrates and Tigris lands. Citation needed the city reached its heyday between 1800 and 1200 BC, when it ruled a trade-based coastal kingdom, trading with Egypt, Cyprus, the Aegean, Syria, the Hittites, and much of the eastern Mediterranean. The first written evidence mentioning the city comes from the nearby city of Ablo, c. 1800 BC. Ugarit passed into the sphere of influence of Egypt, which deeply influenced its art. Evidence of the earliest Ugaritic contact with Egypt and the first exact dating of Ugaritic civilization comes from a Carnelian beat identified with the Middle Kingdom Pharaoh Senusurdi, 1971-1926 BC. A stela and a statuette from the Egyptian Pharaoh Senusurd III and Amenemhet III have also been found. However, it is unclear at what time these monuments were brought to Ugarit. Amarna letters from Ugarit c. 1350 BC recur, one letter each from Amitamruai, 
Neek Madu II, and his queen. From the 16th to the 13th century BC, Ugarit remained in regular contact with Egypt and Alashia Cyprus. Bronze Age Collats, the last Bronze Age king of Ugarit, Amurapi circa 1215 to 1180 BC, was a contemporary of the last known Hittite king, Suppaluliuma II. The exact dates of his reign are unknown, however, a letter by the king is preserved in which Amurapi stresses the seriousness of the crisis faced by many Near Eastern states due to attacks. Amurapi's response to an appeal for assistance from the king of Alashia highlights the desperate situation that Ugarit and other cities faced. My father, behold, the enemy's ships came here, my cities were burned, and they did evil things in my country. Does not my father know that all my troops and chariots are in the land of Hadi, and all my ships are in the land of Lucca? Thus, the country is abandoned to itself. May my father know it. The seven ships of the enemy that came here inflicted much damage upon us. Eshuwara, the senior governor of Cyprus, responded, As for the matter concerning those enemies, it was the people from your country and your own ships who did this, and it was the people from your country who committed these transgressions. I am writing to inform you and protect you. Beware. The ruler of Karchemish sent troops to assist Ugarit, but Ugarit had been sacked. A letter sent, after Ugarit had been destroyed said, when your messenger arrived, the army was humiliated, and the city was sacked. Our food in the threshing floors was burnt and the vineyards were also destroyed. Our city is sacked. May you know it. May you know it. Evidence suggests that Ugarit was burned to the ground at the end of the Bronze Age. An Egyptian sword bearing the name of Pharaoh Mernita was found, in the destruction levels. However, a cuneiform tablet found in 1986 shows that Ugarit was destroyed after the death of Mernipta. It is now generally agreed that Ugarit had already been destroyed by the eighth year of Ramesses, 3 in 1178 BC. The destruction was followed by hiatus in settlement at Ugarit. Many other Mediterranean cultures were deeply disordered at the same time, by invasions of the mysterious sea peoples, and also by famines and earthquakes. Archaeological site, Ugarit's location was forgotten until 1928. When an Alawite peasant accidentally opened an old tomb, while plowing a field, the discovered area was the necropolis of Ugarit, located in the nearby seaport of Minot Elbida. Excavations have since revealed an important city that took its place alongside the ancient cities of Aran Eridu as a cradle of urban culture. Its prehistory reaches back to Kot, 6000 BC perhaps because it was both a port and entrance to the trade route to the inland centers, which lay on the Euphrates and Tigris rivers. Site and Palace The site is a 20 meters 65 foot high mound. Archaeologically, Ugarit is considered quintessentially Canaanite. A brief investigation of a looted tomb at the necropolis of Minot Albida was conducted by Leon Albanese in 1928 who then examined the main mound of Ras Shamra, but in the next year scientific excavations of Tel Ras Shamra were commenced by archaeologist Claude Scheffer from the Musée Archaeologique in Strasbourg. Work continued under Scheffer until 1970, with a break from 1940 to 1947 because of World War II. Most early excavations of Ubrit were undertaken by archaeologist Claude Scheffer from the prehistoric and Gallo-Roman Museum in Strasbourg. The digs uncovered a major royal palace of 90 rooms, laid out around eight enclosed courtyards, many ambitious private dwellings, and libraries. Crowning the hill where the city was built were two main temples, one to Baal the king of the gods, and one to Dagon, the god of fertility and wheat. 23 stelae were unearthed, 9 stelae, including the famous Baal with thunderbolt, near the Temple of Baal, for in the Temple of Dagon and ten more at scattered places around the city the most important piece of literature recovered from Ugarit is arguably the Baal cycle text, describing the basis for the religion and cult of the Canaanite Baal and the dramatic myth of his ascendancy to the head of the pantheon of Canaanite deities. The site yielded several deposits of cuneiform clay tablets, discovered at a palace library, a temple library, and apparently unique in the world at the time to private libraries all dating from the last phase of Ugarit, around 1200 BC. One of the private libraries belonged to a diplomat named Rapanu and contained legal, economic, diplomatic, administrative, literary, and religious texts. Ugarit's archaeological sites have yielded a wealth of information about this ancient civilization. The city's remains include a royal palace, temples, and residential areas, the royal palace 
with its well-preserved archives, is of particular significance. These clay tablets provide detailed accounts of daily life, trade, and diplomatic correspondence. They also contain legal texts, shedding light on Ugarit's legal system and societal organization. Alphabet and language. Scribes in Ugarit appear to have originated the cuneiform-based Ugaritic alphabet around 1400 BCE. It consisted of 30 letters, corresponding to sounds, adapted from cuneiform characters and inscribed on clay tablets, and is one of the earliest known alphabetic scripts. Ugaritic texts have provided invaluable insights into the language, literature, and religious beliefs of this civilization. A debate exists as to whether the Phoenician or Ugaritic alphabet was invented first. Evidence suggests that the two systems were not wholly independent inventions. Later, it would be the Phoenician alphabet that spread through the Aegean and on Phoenician trade routes throughout the Mediterranean. The Phoenician system thus became the basis for the first true alphabet when it was adopted by Greek speakers who modified some of its signs to represent vowel sounds as well. This system was in turn adopted and modified by populations in Italy, including ancestors of the Romans. The most famous Ugaritic literary works include the Ball Cycle, a collection of epic poems centered around the god Ball and his battles and triumphs. These texts provide a unique perspective on religious and mythological beliefs of the Ugaritic people. Ugarit's literature, written in a Semitic language, offers a glimpse into the linguistic and cultural context of the time. Compared with the difficulty of writing the widely used diplomatic language of Akkadian and cuneiform as exemplified in the Amarna letters, the flexibility of an alphabet opened a horizon of literacy to many more kinds of people. In contrast, the syllabary used in Mycenaean Greek talus sites at about the same time called Linear B was so cumbersome that literacy was limited largely to administrative specialists. Ugaritic language and Ugaritic grammar the existence of the Ugaritic language is attested to in texts from the 14th through the 12th century BC. Ugaritic is usually classified as a Northwest Semitic language and therefore related to Hebrew, Aramaic, and Phoenician. Among others, its grammatical features are highly similar to those found in classical Arabic and Akkadian. It possesses to genders masculine and feminine, three cases for nouns and adjectives nominative, accusative, and genitive, three numbers singular, dual, and plural, and verb aspects similar to those found in other Northwest Semitic languages. The word order in Ugaritic is verb subject object, subject object verb vs and sov, possess possessorang, first element dependent on the function and second always in genitive case, and noun adjective na both in the same case i.e. congruent. Ugaritic literature, apart from royal correspondence with neighboring Bronze Age monarchs, Ugaritic literature from tablets found in the city's libraries include mythological texts written in a poetic narrative, letters, legal documents such as land transfers, a few international treaties, and a number of administrative lists. Fragments of several poetic works have been identified. The Legend of Carrot, The Legend of Daniel, The Ball Tales that detail Ball had its conflicts with Yan and Mott, among other fragments. 1450 BC, Cultural and intellectual achievements. The Ugarit civilization reached its cultural and intellectual peak during this time. The city was known for its advanced literature, including epic poems and religious texts. The Ugaritians were also skilled in various arts, such as pottery and metalwork. They developed a unique alphabet known as the Ugaritic script, which was one of the earliest known alphabets in history. Ugarit's cultural achievements left a lasting impact on the region. The discovery of the Ugaritic archives in 1929 has been of great significance to biblical scholarship, as these archives for the first time provided a detailed description of Canaanite religious beliefs during the period directly preceding the Israelite settlement. These texts show significant parallels to Hebrew biblical literature, particularly in the areas of divine imagery and poetic form. Ugaritic poetry has many elements later found in Hebrew poetry, parallelisms, meters, and rhythms. The discoveries at Ugarit have led to a new appraisal of the Hebrew Bible as literature, religion, and mythology. The important textual finds from the site shed a great deal of light upon the cultic life of the city. The foundations of the Bronze Age city Ugarit were divided into quarters in the northeast quarter of the walled enclosure. The remains of three significant religious buildings were discovered 
including to temples of the gods Balhaddon and Dagon, and to building referred to as the library or the high priest's house. Within these structures atop the Acropolis numerous invaluable mythological texts were found. These texts have provided the basis for understanding of the Canaanite mythological world and religion. The ball of Ugarit was likely the same as the ball of the Hebrew Bible. The ball cycle represents Balhaddad's destruction of Yam the god of chaos and the sea, demonstrating the relationship of Canaanite Chaskamp with those of Mesopotamia and the Aegean. A warrior god rises up as the hero of the new pantheon to defeat chaos and bring order. Eucharitic mythology viewed the forces of chaos and the cosmic energies of chaos as divine despite them opposing heroic gods. Literature from tablets found in the libraries of Ugarit includes mythological texts written in a narrative poetry. Fragments of several poetic works have been identified. The Legend of Kurdu, The Legend of Danil, the religious texts that describe Balhadid's conflicts with Yan and Mot, and other fragments. Ugaritic religion centered on the chief god, Ilu Orel, whose titles included Father of Mankind and Creator of the Creation. The Court of El was referred to as the plural LHM or Elohim, a word later used by the biblical writers to describe the Hebrew deity and translated into English as God. In the singular, Decide El, the most important of the other gods were the Lord and King of the God Balhadid, the Mother Goddess Aetherot or Asherah, the Sea God Yam, Baal's sister Anat, and the Desert God of Death, Mot, other deities worshipped at Ugarit included Dagon Grain, Reshef Healing, Kothar and Kossus the Divine Craftsman, Jahardon or the Sun, Shalim Dusk, and Tyrosh Greats. Tablet bearing the legend of the Ugaritic hero Danil, El, which was also the name of the God of Abraham, was described as an aged deity with white hair, seated on a throne. Although El was the highest deity and the father of many of the other gods, he had bequeathed the kingship of the gods to Baal, and Baal had defeated the previous incumbent, Yem, who had turned Tyran and attempted to claim El's wife Asherah as his consort, at Ugrit. Baal was known by several titles, King of the Gods, the Most High Elion, Beelzebub, Prince Baal, and the Rider on the Clouds. The Ugaritic texts reveal intricate details about their religious practices, including sacrifices, Offerings and rituals. The Ugarit civilization's religious beliefs were closely tied to nature and the agricultural cycles, reflecting their reliance on the land for sustenance and prosperity. Kings, Nikmaduai, first known Ugaritan king, known only from a damaged seal that mentions Yakram, son of Nikmadu, king of Ugarit, Yakram, second known Ugaritan king, known only from a damaged seal that mentions Yakram, son of Nikmadu, king of Ugarit. Amitamurwai, c. 1350 BC, Nikmadu II, c. 1350 to 1315 BC, contemporary of Supaluliamai of the Hittites, Arhalba, c. 1315 to 1313 BC, contemporary of King Mursili II of the Hittites, Nikmepa, c. 1313 to 1260 BC, treaty with Mursili II of the Hittites, son of Nikmadu II, Amitamur II, c. 1260 to 1235 BC contemporary of Bentasina of Amur, son of Nikmepa, Ibiranu, c. 1235 to 1225 20th BC addressee of the letter of Pihawalwi, Nikmadu III, c. 1225 20th, 1215 BC Amurapi, c. 1200 BC contemporary of Chancellor Bay of Egypt, last known ruler of Ugarit, Ugarit is destroyed in his reign. Conclusion to Ugarit civilization, with its unique language, literature, and religious beliefs, holds a special place in the annals of history, its strategic location, at the crossroads of ancient empires, facilitated cultural exchange and made it a hub of commerce and diplomacy. The discovery of Ugaritic texts and archaeological findings has given us a window into a world that existed over three millennia ago, as we continue to decipher and study the legacy of Ugarit we gain a deeper understanding of the diversity and complexity of human civilization in the ancient world, illuminating a cultural beacon that once shone brightly along the shores of the eastern Mediterranean, and 